بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن وله ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of our Ramadan Reflection Series Keys to the Divine Compass where we go through verses of the Quran from every juz throughout the month of Ramadan so that we can learn lessons and apply them to our lives. Inshallah, today I will be going over two verses from Surah Al-Isra, Surah number 17, verses 18 and 19. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. Man kana yuridu al-ajila ta'ajjalna lahu fiha ma nasha'u liman nuridu thumma ja'alna lahu jahannam yislaha madhmuman madhura. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these two verses is giving both a note of hope and a warning for the paths that are available for the creation to take. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that at the conclusion of sending all of the messengers and all of the revelations when the message is clear and the expectations of your Lord is clear upon you, you have essentially two paths to choose from. You can either choose to live in this world as if you only have this life to live, and you can choose to do in it as you please, without any boundaries, without any rules, without any regulations, without, without any hesitation. You are free to do as you wish, and you are your own master. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the second path that is available to you is that you live a life of discomfort. You live a life of sacrifice. You live a life where you are living according to the boundaries and the regulations that Allah has placed upon you. And you put an effort in the life of the hereafter. You put an effort where you were expecting the reward not to be given perhaps in this world, but to be given in the next. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that man kana yuridu al-ajila. A person who wants the immediate. Ajila, the one who wants the immediate benefit of this life. In other words, this is a fleeting, temporary blip of existence compared to the rest of the eternity. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if a person chooses to put all of their chips on the table and wants to only focus on their life in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them. Man kana yuridu al If a person wants the immediate, if a person wants the immediate benefits of this life, they want to live within the glitz and glamour of this life, Allah says, ajalna lahu, that we will give them whatever they wish in this world. We will give them the immediate benefits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will give them ma nasha'u, whatever we wish. Whatever we wish, liman nuridu, to whomever we wish. And this is something that we see around us today. That the people who are perhaps the most unethical, the most immoral, have the most resources. And the people who covet the most, have the most. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that because they wished to just have everything in this world and to enjoy the comforts, of this life and not to worry about anything else, Allah says we give it to them. And we are giving it to them because we know that on the day of judgment, they will not be able to say that, oh Allah, I did not know that there was another option available. I did not know that there was a better path available because the messengers and the revelations had been sent down to warn humanity of the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the meantime, as we give them all of what they desire in this world, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمُ That we make for them a place in the fire. And the ultimate result of that on the Day of Judgment, يَصْلَاهَا مَذْمُومًا madhura. They will enter the fire in a state of disgrace and they will be discarded. They will just be thrown in and they will be forgotten. That is not a path that we want to take. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the path of the believers is the one man kana yuridu al-akhirah, the one who yearns, the one who desires for the hereafter. And this particular ayah 
doesn't necessarily mean that a person does not try to enjoy the comforts of this world. It doesn't mean that a person lives a life of extreme poverty and sacrifice in this world. What it simply means that in the course of our worldly existence, as we go about our day to day and we work to take care of ourselves, to take care of our families, to take care of our responsibilities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that our ultimate objective is still in the hereafter. Our ultimate objective is to aim for the hereafter. So, man kana yuridu al-akhirah, the one who aims for the hereafter, and not just not just intends for the hereafter, but also wasaalaha sa'yaha, they put an effort for it. We have to work for the hereafter. It won't come easy. It doesn't come without sacrifice. It doesn't come without denying ourselves our base impulses. It doesn't come without denying ourselves the things that we would also like to do, just like everyone else. Allah says, وَسَعَالَهَا سَعِيَهَا The one who intends for the hereafter and works towards it. However, there are many people who have a concept of the hereafter and many people who hope for a better afterlife. But Allah says, it has to be in the right frame of mind. وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ A person has to be a one of belief. A person has to be someone who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who submits to the final revelation, who submits to the mission of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With the right frame of mind, when a person aims for the hereafter and works towards it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا that all of their efforts, all of their sacrifices, all of their denying themselves what they had wished to do, all of this is mashkura. It is very much appreciated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shakur, ash-shakur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most appreciative. We know and believe that our worship and what we do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not increase Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way. And we are also aware that what we do not do, as in what the rest of humanity chooses not to do in not acknowledging Allah and not worshipping Allah, does not harm Allah at all as well. So at the end of the day, whatever efforts we put in in terms of worship, and whatever efforts that we put in, in terms of sacrifice, in terms of abstaining from sin, trying to follow the path of good, trying to stay away from the path of wrong, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all of this is being witnessed. It is being written down by the angels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and hears all and knows everything in his infinite knowledge. And it is very much appreciated because Allah knows that we are doing it only to please him. And for the believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure that will be earned and that will be given to them and that will be declared upon them that I am pleased with you. That is the greatest reward a believer will receive on the Day of Judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable all of us to receive that declaration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is pleased with us, that our efforts had been accepted, and that all of the sacrifice that we had done in the course of our lives were, insha'Allah, insha'Allah, worth the effort. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide, bless, and protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.